There we go. All right, over to you, to you uh, Lynn and Joanne. Okay, so thank you very much, Nicola and Neil, for inviting us to do this session. Um, so we we titled our session "Learning from Our First Experience of Emergency Remote Teaching." Um, I'm going to begin by just giving you a, con a little bit of context about our first experience. I'm then going to talk a little bit about our pedagogy and what we felt had to stay the same. We didn't want to lose our pedagogy. We wanted to be led by our beliefs and values and theories about how learning happens. And then I'm going to just show you um, our RU Connected site that we used for the module. And then after that, Joanne's going to talk about our various challenges what we think worked well, what didn't work well, and also feedback from our participants. So is that okay? I can't see the chat. Um, please, if you have want to interrupt, please feel free to. Um, otherwise, we will have a chance for some interaction at the end of the session. But I'm relying Lynn? on my colleagues. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to watch the chat in case there's anything that you need to respond to as we go along. Great, and Joanne, uh, you know, as we usually do when we um, co-teach, which is what we do mostly for this course, please interrupt at any point that you'd like to. Okay, so this was one module, um, the, the fifth module of our postgraduate diploma in higher education, uh, specifically for academic developers. For those who don't understand what that means, it means for people who work in teaching and learning units, quality units, um, and, in, and in fact, in this class, um, we, had, we have 16 participants and they come from 10 different institutions, which is quite something. Um, so we have to deal with a lot of people with, with very different contexts. And within those 10 institutions, aside from South African universities, we have um, someone from the DHET, someone from the Council on Higher Education, and we have a, a Namibian participant. So it's quite a diverse group. And um, an important thing for us is that it's a postgraduate diploma. So it's very much focused towards a specific practice. And in this case, it's the practice of academic development. So we needing to help people make connections to their contexts and their practices all the time. So for teaching this course, we had to be very aware of this diversity of context, which My, included um, technology um, access, data access, and so on. I mean, we realized that we did not have the challenges that a lot of undergraduate um, lecturers will have, but we, we, we did have some challenges as well. One of the things that I think helped was that because it's the fifth module, we've already had four face-to-face -face block teaching sessions with this group. So in a way that means we, we, we do know them, we know our students. And I think that that really helps when you're trying to make a connection. I think it would be a lot harder to do this with a new group of students. Okay, I think, Joanne, is there anything else about the context that you think I should have mentioned? Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very, very small group. Um, but I do think that quite a, a few of our experiences will be relevant for people who have much larger classes um, than our, our very small group. Yeah, okay, thanks for that. So I'm just gonna motor through, um, I'm, I mean, I'm trusting that most people who are um, watching this or participating in the Zoom meeting will kind of know what we're talking about. I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of um, deep theory, but just a quick overview of our pedagogy. So one of the important things we always do is we want to activate people's background knowledge about a particular topic for each module. So in this, in this um, case, as you will see from the screen share, the topic was quality, enhancing and assuring the quality of teaching and learning in, in our institutions and the role of academic developers. So we always set um, what's called a pre-module task where we get people to, to think about what it is they already know about the topic. And if they don't know much, we encourage them to find out what's happening in their institutions around that topic. 
and they are required to submit this pre-module task before they even arrive for the for the face-to-face uh, -face block teaching sessions. So that idea of activating background knowledge, we we have we wanted to hang on to that. Um, another concept um, is curriculum alignment. We, we realize how incredibly important it is in every module that there's a very clear structure, that students understand the structure, that it's made explicit, that it's made overt for them. Um, and it's not only the structure of that particular module, but it's about how does this module fit into the whole course. So it's kind of keeping the big, the big picture in, in mind as well. Um, we also were very mindful of three of Basil Bernstein's um, concepts, which are selection, sequencing, and pacing. So we we wanted to be careful in our selection of knowledge and and what we and content. What do we what do we want to foreground and and making really sure that we make a, a very good selection as far as possible. Uh, sequencing, in what order were we presenting it? Was there a kind of a storyline, a plot to our course that our students could follow? So we wanted to keep that idea. And of course, pacing. So some sessions needed more attention than other sessions. And we needed to think about how we were pacing each of our sessions. And then um, of course, as most of you will agree, a very important pedagogic principle for us is the idea that our students have to be actively engaged in constructing their own knowledge. It's not about us just um, giving them lots and lots of narrated PowerPoints and, and expecting them to learn from that. We had to make sure that we um, had lots of tasks, that we got them working in groups, we had to encourage social learning. We had to um, encourage peer learning. And of course, that's much easier in a face-to-face -face context. Um, so we had to rethink how we could do that um, in remote um, emergency teaching. Lynn, yeah. um, there's a question here about um, what we mean when we say we, we, we did the sessions online. Uh, maybe you want to say something about that? Okay, so um, I, I think it'll probably become a little bit clearer when I scroll down and show you the, the, the sessions. So we had to think about how we could get, um, um, how we could do what we would normally do face to face, but in using the, the online facilities. And I, I think I'll show that, Joanne. Is that does that is that enough? Do you want to add? No, that's 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 fine. And I think um, you know, as you go along, um, I may have become clearer. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else? Okay. So I mean, one thing we've always tried to do is get people to do quite a lot of documenting of their learning, to do small writing tasks during our face-to-face -face sessions. And actually, we, we often didn't succeed very well in doing that. We got a lot of discussion and we got um, groups sharing their discussion, but not much documenting. And we realized that for this course, we, we really had to um, make sure that there was a lot of documenting. So as you'll see later, there are a lot of tasks, there's a lot of scaffolding being done to, to help the students kind of move through the course so that by the end, they are able to, to do the, the module assessment, which is a kind of an integrated assessment task. We also had to think carefully about giving them access to resources and not overwhelming them with too many, thinking very carefully which resources. We had to think about different ways of mediating learning. Um, and yeah, I think like a really big thing was keeping in mind all the time that for us teaching is about knowing, it's about the knowledge. It's also about being, it's about thinking about, about, about the people we are teaching, what their needs are, and what kinds of knowers we're hoping to shape through our course and doing, because ultimately these are people who have to go and practice in their institution. So how uh, what are they learning um, during each module that will impact positively on their practice? Um, and then another principle of ours is that for formative kind of learning and assessment, feedback is really important. So you'll, we tried our very best, and Joanne will talk about this more later, 
to give very quick and we hope quite high quality feedback throughout the week when our participants were working on the course. So just one, um, shall I just pause there, Joanne? Um, yeah, I, no, 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 I don't have, have anything to add. Perhaps, no, no, perhaps just to say uh, that normally when we meet with our groups, uh, we meet in a week-long block. Um, and we did suggest to this group that perhaps we, we spread the course out over a, a couple of weeks um, because we also recognized that online learning was very different to face-to-face -face learning uh, and particularly with this COVID-19 crisis um, that people have a, a lot on their mind that working at home is definitely not the same as um, being in, in a classroom, that there's lots of stuff, both work stuff and home stuff to attend to. This group um, elected to do the course during one week only. Uh, and a little bit later, I think I'll say, I'll, I'll say more about how, how they've experienced um, doing what is normally a week long block face to face um, over the period of a week online. Okay, thanks, Jan. Yeah, that was a very important kind of contextual difference that I, that I forgot to mention. So that whole kind of almost like a list of things around our pedagogy, I, I really think it's very important to start with that before you, you start thinking about um, how to do things online, because you need to, and you, you know, you need to make explicit to yourself what, you, what your pedagogy is and how you think learning needs to happen in your course. But then after that, and this was our challenge, was now to adjust to this changed emergency remote teaching mode. And we had to think through how we could keep doing and, and keep, keep our pedagogy in mind um, while at the same time designing a, a course that was manageable for both the facilitators and for the participants. Um, if there's nothing from the chat, then I'm going to now um, kind of just take people quickly through the, through the course. Is there anything from the chat, Jan or Nicola? Uh, it's just Roxana asking whether we had um, synchronous sessions every day. And I'm just saying you will talk to that now as you go through the course. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I hope you can all see the screen. So this is what our RU Connected site looks like. Um, just the usual information, the purpose of the module. And I, I have a firm belief that if people understand why they're doing something, they're much more likely to engage. And, and I think it's, it's, it's really important to foreground the purpose of each module. So just going through it quite quickly, of course, we had the usual discussion forum as all groups have um, and other kind of admin stuff. And then interestingly enough, when we first communicated with this group about how we should proceed, and there were lengthy communications um, about how we should adjust to our new context, they told us that they didn't want to work in groups. And um, after quite a bit of thought, we decided that we really had to use our professional kind of judgment here. And we, uh, we insisted on them um, forming groups. Um, although they, they negotiated amongst themselves how the groups would work. So you'll see there that we had five groups. Um, I'm not going to comment on how everything worked, because that Joanne's going to do. I'm just going to tell you what was there. So we had a, um, a reflection site where um, we encouraged people to just reflect on how the week was going. So if they you know, wanted to tell us anything, uh, we were keeping an eye on that. Right, so then on the Monday morning of the 27th of April, we um, started the module and we started with um, a Zoom session. And um, you can see what we dealt with in that Zoom session. A lot of talk about um, how we were all having to adjust to this new mode of learning that we weren't used to, along with the other things, the, the sort of course related things that are here. So we used this as a, and it was a long Zoom session. It was probably an hour and a half, close to two hours. Um, but we, yeah, it was, it was definitely a very worthwhile thing to do. And in that task, we dealt with things like uh, the big picture, 
how does this module fit in? Um, we, we talked about their pre-module tasks and so on. So these are all the bits and pieces that go with that first session. Uh, and we made the recording available. I think three quarters at least of the class were able to attend that Zoom meeting. We also um, provided a module guide that, um, so that they could print if they wanted to or, or open in a Word document that also helped them to navigate the, the course. We, we always have one of those. So we just made that one a bit more um, uh, explicit from what we usually do. You'll see we use quite a couple of little kind of voice notes or voice memos, um, a photograph, just a picture for them to look at while the voice note was going on. So that was the first main session. The next session on that Monday um, required them to do a reading, to write um, a, a reading response. If, if you don't know what that is, we can talk about that later. And they were also um, given a narrated PowerPoint on the topic of the conceptions of quality. And in each block, we also provided a forum so that if the big group wanted to talk to each other, they could. But um, the idea was that kind of in the background, the groups would, would, were talking amongst themselves and that the, each group were then required to um, upload a task. We were quite flexible with this group um, because they were so reluctant to work in groups that we, we kind of said, if you want to do it individually in groups or pairs, that's fine. Um, and Joanne will talk about how that worked. Um, and then, of course, additional readings for those who wanted to access those. And actually, this is kind of the pattern. What we tried quite hard to do was keep a very similar pattern for each session so that students got used to it. Um, so here, a little introduction about what the session is, um, suggesting they watch the narrated PowerPoint first, and then they do a task. And this session was broke, it, it was, it's, it's one topic, but it was broken up into two different sections, two different narrated PowerPoints and two different tasks. So you can see the resources, the main sort of core readings and recommended readings and the tasks and the narrated PowerPoints and the forum as with the other sessions. And yeah, I'm not sure that it's necessary for me to go into too much more detail. So I'll just sort of whip through it. So that this is the, so it was kind of instructions at the top. Um, too long, too many, but Joanne will talk about that later. Um, very similar kind of technology that people had to use or, or ways of learning, like the photograph, the voice note, the forum, the narrated PowerPoints, and then the task. So for every session, um, the people were um, required, expected to submit either a task as part of a group or to submit it individually. Then, and, yeah. I wonder if you can just scroll back up to that uh, block where there was two, where there were too many tasks yeah, uh, session. yeah so so maybe i can say something about that now while you have the visual image um in front sure. of you um our participants commented that they would have preferred in a section like this which was a fairly complex and 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 quite a a, a long section that it would have been better if we'd broken up this session three into three separate blocks you know so we would have so so each particular uh topic subtopic in in the section needed to have had its own block in the in the are you connected site um and that has to do i think with 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 the visual impact of the amount of work that um you know that they were required to do but I also think that it, it helped them to, to see visually exactly what they had to do. It would have helped them to see visually exact, exactly what they would have had to do um, for each, each subsection of, of the topic. Um, you know, so people who are still busy designing courses, that, that really is a, a very useful piece of feedback uh, from our participants. Yeah, thanks for that, Joanne. I think that was like big learning for us. Um, 
So it was a structure that worked when we did it, did it face to face, but it was a structure that we needed to change actually um, to do it online. Um, yeah, we tried to be as explicit about what was needed and to provide everything that they needed to, to follow the instructions kind of in a block. And so this is all pretty similar. Um, yeah, so then by session seven, we decided to experiment um, in a different way because we wanted it to be a more of a whole class discussion in the tasks. And so we set up um, Google Docs, shared Google Docs, so that each group had to do tasks within the Google Docs so that everybody could, could see how the groups were responding to the task. Um, I'm sure, Joanne, I don't know if you want to talk about the, 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 the issues with this now rather than wait till later. Uh, I can say something about this now, and uh, you know, and I'll just repeat it when I um, when I summarise um, our participants' feedback. So, what happened here again? A big block um, with many different tasks. Um, well, this one didn't have so many, but um, a task tasks in that we wanted students to do in groups or pairs or individually on a Google Doc. You know, so this was part of their, their documenting their learning. Um, and as I say, we wanted that to happen on the Google Doc. But what happened with some of these was that we gave them uh, more than one task in one Google Doc. Um, and, and that was also too much, you know. So again, the, the principle of chunking is, is very important here. So even separating out um, the various tasks that need to happen in each section into different Google Docs is, is a good idea. A again, it just sort of breaks down the tasks much more clearly for, th for the students. Okay, thanks, Joanne. Is there anything from the chat? Nothing for now. Okay. Um... Yeah. And so, so long. yeah. Um, so Anthea is asking uh, whether all the tasks had to be completed during the week, or were we quite flexible with due dates? Um, so um, Anthea, obviously the ideal was for people to do them during the week, but uh, we knew from the get-go that that was unrealistic. And um, we really tried to reduce people's anxiety by saying to them, just do as much as you can. It'll all be sitting there waiting for you if you can't do it immediately. Um, and, but I must say, I was quite um, impressed with how probably three quarters, at least two thirds of the class did manage to keep up pretty well with the tasks. Um, but I think it's important in the in this context for us to have um, kind of reduced their stress about having to do it all in one week. The other thing that we spoke about a lot in the first Zoom meeting was the nature of the tasks. And we spoke about the importance of them seeing it as pre-writing and that they, they weren't expected to write like good academic writing. It was getting their ideas out there, documenting their learning. And I, I get a sense that talking about that quite a lot really helped people to, to, to be more brave actually than, off, than they usually are to, to show us the initial kind of writing. Okay, Lynn, can I just go through a few things on the chat here, if you don't mind? Yeah, please. Are All right, so Nicola, Nicola I can do that. So Nicola is asking, did everyone have experience with Google Docs? Um, the answer is probably no, because one of the bits of feedback we got was that our participants would have liked, in general, to have had more orientation to online learning or, or how to, uh, to, to manage the week. Uh, and I'll talk a bit about that later, but also just to say that um, some of them said it would have been good if we'd explained to them very clearly how to use the Google Doc, um, because not everybody had, had used 
Google Docs before. You know, so, so it's just having a sense that, that everything uh, needs to be explained and needs to be explained really carefully. Um, then, Masejo wants to know, how do you accommodate... Sorry, for the to add, just, just before yeah. you move on from the Google Docs. So we did encourage people to let us know you know, as quickly as possible if they were struggling with anything. And so we were alerted to the Google Doc issues quite early on. And so Joanne did a series of little voice notes, which we sent on the, on the WhatsApp group, which we, we also, that's very active with this group, um, to give them instructions on how to use the Google Docs. So I think that's also important. You know, we, if, if you, you, you think students can do things, but to signal that they must let you know, and then you can respond very quickly with giving them assistance. Sorry, Joanne. No, that was, that was a really good point to make. Thank you. Uh, so Masejo wants to know, how do you accommodate the different writing styles in the group tasks? Um, Masejo, so for us, it wasn't really, you know, the, the, the style of writing wasn't really important here. What was important was that students used the writing task to process their learning and to document their learning. Having said that, uh, what happened in, in many of the groups, and this I got from the feedback, was that um, group members would do bits uh, on their own, um, you know, respond to the various tasks on their own, and then send their writing to one person um, who would then collate it and get it into a, you know, a, a form and, and smooth the writing um, and then submit, and then they, that person submitted it on, on the Google Doc. Um, so I suppose that that did sort of, I think, get rid of the various writing styles um, of different people in a group. And then Carol says she liked the, likes the idea of teaching through Google Docs um, so that participants themselves learn how Google Docs can be used. Uh, and this is really important. Um, so the people that we teach are themselves teachers or they're academic developers. And so a lot of what we do is to try and, and model um, ways of doing things um, in the classroom. This time it was modeling how to do things online. Um, uh, but also to say, you know, if, if we say we, we're modeling, we try and do the best that we can, but we're also very open about making mistakes um, and then talking through, you know, um, how those mistakes you know, were received by our participants, like, for example, you know, putting too many tasks in one Google Doc, putting too many instructions in one block, uh, you know, so, um, yeah, we learn as we go along and we're very willing to admit our mistakes and to learn with our, our participants. Um, Nicola asked whether participants manage to keep up with tasks as well as they do in a face-to-face -face course. Um, Nicola, I think it was more or less similar. Um, and during the, the earlier part of the week, um, you know, there was, okay, so what, 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 I, what I noticed was that um, participants struggled with the pace of the week. Uh, you know, so by the time we got to day four uh, on the Google, on the, the RU Connected site, um, most participants had only gotten up to day three, um, you know, going through the material and doing the tasks. So things were going a bit more slowly um, online, as we expected um, would happen. All right, Namusa says, my students have the option to contact their tutors either through Are You Connected or through WhatsApp. They seem to prefer WhatsApp. Uh, I guess the reason is that response through WhatsApp is quicker. Um, yeah, that may be the case. However, as, as Martin noted in um, a response to something on the chat, um, it really is important to communicate with students on multiple platforms to repeat things. Um, mm -hmm. 
at various points in different ways. So what we found was that it was important to uh, communicate notices both via WhatsApp and on the RU Connected forum, um, you know, just in case people missed it or because, uh, you know, our heads are so full at the moment, um, you know, that we do tend to miss, miss some things. And then if it's repeated elsewhere, you know, then we, uh, we're likely to get it. Um, right, where are we? Nicholas says, yeah, so we need to scaffold any new tools and how to use them. I suppose in reference to the Google Docs story. Um, yeah, having a WhatsApp group alongside the RU Connected worked well. That's from one of our participants uh, who's also on this, um, on this Zoom session this afternoon. Uh, and then Nicola about working collaboratively is something that we can't take for granted. It needs to be scaffolded. Um, can I say something about that? Please. Um, I've had, so, so we're teaching another module next week for another group. So, uh, you know, we're really trying to apply our learning um, uh, as much as possible. I want to, in our Zoom, first Zoom meeting on Monday with our new group, to talk quite a lot about group work and how we suggest they go about it and how they need to actually... Um, decide on rules of engagement and who's going and roles. And so I, I think this is something we didn't do with this group. We very much left it up to them. Our participants are all adults. They are all working people. I kind of made the assumption that they would just work it out themselves. And um, I think a lot more talking about it and advising um, on how to collaborate is, is, is going to be very useful for the next module. Okay, um, this is a really important comment from Candice, saying that she's finding WhatsApp groups a necessary evil, uh, necessary because, you know, it, it helps to keep people up to date, and evil because it can be quite invasive and uh, we can have messages at all hours of the day uh, or night. Um, so I think it's quite important to, um, you know, to, to set some boundaries uh, with WhatsApp. Um, you know, and to ask students if at all possible, you know, um, either they, you ask them not to post, you know, between certain hours because of the fact that it's, it's so invasive. Um, if that isn't possible, then you have got to say to them that you will respond to WhatsApp messages or queries between the hours of, you know, 8.30 and 5 o'clock or something like that. Um, I think it's very important at this time in particular, uh, you know, to, to set boundaries. Um, and, online and with online teaching, it can be so easy to just, you know, let the boundaries fray. Um, and I don't think that's, that's healthy, uh, either for us or, our, or for our students. Okay, anything else, Joanne? And Nicola says, perhaps you've got to, you know, mute the group. Um, hmm. also be a, 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 a go to bed. bed. Yeah, when you go to bed. Okay, that's it for the chat room. Okay, I just want to um, wrap up quite quickly because um, the important stuff's really still coming. So one little pedagogic or assessment thing that we do for all our um, week block sessions is that at the end of the week, every single participant has to do a five minute presentation. And of course, they are given a particular topic and they have to prepare for it. And that's done, you know, they stand up in front of the group and they do their five minute presentation. So we have to, we've had to think of um, different way, uh, a different way of doing it. And this time we um, suggested much more flexibility in the form. They could do a written document, a video, a voice note, a narrated PowerPoint. And we also set up um, pairs so that you can see there, there the pairs are. They had to give each other, have to, this, the, the upload date is tomorrow morning. So we'll see how well this worked. They had to do peer feedback in the background of each other's five minute presentations and then upload them um, for Joanne and I to give them feedback. And I still need to think about a way in which we can share um, the, the feedback with the whole group because I've always felt that that there's a lot of learning in that in that five minute presentation feedback. 
I think that's probably enough from, you know, kind of showing you the course. So at, at right at the end, there's also a whole block on, on kind of getting them ready for the final portfolio, which, which will happen towards the end of this year. But it's just making people feel safe that they already have um, quite a lot of the resources that they will need to get started with that. Um, yeah, I think that's me, Joanne. I'm happy to hand over to you now or to answer any further questions. Yeah, perhaps just give time for people to ask questions. Um, and then, yeah, if you can unshare, and then I can share my doc. Um, please chip in. Anybody want to say something? Uh, you can just type M in the chat, um, and then we'll hand you the microphone. Sure, it looks like I've been missing out on this chat. I'll have to read it. Um, yeah, type M to take the mic. Otherwise, Joanne, I have unshared. Are you busy right. sharing your screen? Okay. Um, it's really so great that there's some people that were in that group. Um, yeah, so they must please also feel free to chip in with their comments. If you think we're misrepresenting anything, here's your chance. Okay, Joanne, are you ready to go? Yeah, okay. I'm ready to go. And uh, will you just watch the chat? Uh, yeah. And uh, Roxana wants to take the mic. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't go far enough down. Yeah. Go for it, Roxana. Yeah. Thank you so much for this presentation. Short question. To what extent did you adjust your, the learning outcomes of the module considering the new context? And how much did you introduce, you know, uh, the, the content that COVID-19 brings us into the module? Mm. I'll leave that to you, Joanne. Um, Roxana, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. we can. Yes, I um, hear you. Right. Um, we, we did, but in a very, very limited way. And I think uh, probably a lot has to do with the, um, with the topic of the module, which was, which was quality in higher education. So we did speak a bit about that. Uh, but one of the things that we were very careful to do in the, particularly in the introductory Zoom session, um, and I think again, at the Zoom, in the Zoom session at the end of the week, uh, was to to recognize the context that we're in, uh, you know, to acknowledge that, um, you know, that this was a, a difficult time uh, for everybody, that we are all overwhelmed, that, you know, we're all struggling um, to find our, our way around uh, dealing with, with COVID-19, um, you know, responding to 101 different things. So um, we did that. And I think that's really important, um, you know, not to carry on as if nothing is happening in the world and as if nothing is happening to us. Um, and then, um, you know, Lynn, maybe you can also help here. Um, you know, in, in terms of, of, of quality, um, which is the topic of the module, um, you know, there are different quality requirements for, for teaching and learning and, and for course design um, at, a, at a time like this. And so it would be really important that um, if anybody were to, to, to think about or, 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 or try to assess the quality of whatever is happening um, at this time to take into account the context. Um, yeah, so that's about as, as much as, as we did. Um, Lynn, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I think, I think you, you've covered that. Um, just a comment from Rieta. She says she'd like to know how important the setting or the climate for such a setting of the climate for such a group is, and that she understands that it's easier with a group that you already have a relationship with. Um, did you specifically focus on it? Well, Rieta, you must tell us. Do, do you think that we, we um, manage to focus on, on the relationships. Do you want to take the mic? Um, yes, thanks, Lynn. Um, yes, I think 
Um, definitely, because we already know each other, that was easier. Um, from my side, I think basically because both of you know us, as we entered the room, you could actually greet everyone. And we're also a small group. You could greet us individually and just ask a little bit of a personal thing. Um, you know, and that it helped to to lessen that a little bit of an anxiety and the yeah everything. So I think that helped definitely. But I'm specifically thinking of a, a totally a new group. If you have to um, now work with a group that you don't really know, how will you set such a, a climate? Because you can't really ask personal things because you don't really know the the participants. Yeah. So. Uh, it, it is harder, um, I'm sure of that, and, um, and I'm glad that at least the group we teach next week, we had one face-to-face -face session with them, um, mm -hmm. although it's a bigger group. Um, so I think I, there's going to be harder work with, with kind of making those connections and building those relationships. Mm -hmm. We also do encourage people to communicate with us um, separately. So for example, I personally wrote to every person who didn't make the... Um, the Zoom meeting to ask them how they are, could they access the recording, you know, and so on. So, you, you know, one also works on the relationships in the background. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that also responds to a question that Carol asked earlier, you know, about what, what did we do about people who couldn't make, uh, make the meetings? Uh, so in terms of the Zoom, we recorded the, the, the Zoom sessions and then posted those. Um, we also asked um, participants, you know, who work in the, in the same, in, so we had one participant who really struggled with her, with her connection. Um, and we asked another participant, you know, to, to make contact with that person and to, to fill her in. Although we also wrote to, to that person and said, um, you know, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, you know, we'll be very happy to um, to talk you through what. Just put the keys down. I'm in a meeting. Bye. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, sorry, there are quite a few things on the chat. Um, I'm not keeping up so well. I mean, can, uh, Nicola asked whether we feel we we wanted to achieve the same outcomes, and my response is that. We hope so. And, um, you know, it, we'll be able to tell when we look at um, the, the, the module assignments and so on. And yeah, time will tell whether we did manage it. But then Candace talks about the sciences where um, there's much talk about um, um, how, how much content should be included and needing to trim the content and all the difficulties with the kind of practical components when teaching online. So yeah, that, that's a context that I, I can just say, as Joanne said earlier, we feel for you, Candice. I think that that is, is like really, really difficult. Um, I think it's very important to recognize that people can't, can't do as much online as they would be able to do face to face. And, and that also has to do just with the general context um, and with anxieties and so on. So it probably is a good idea to, um, to reduce our expectations somewhat, uh, to try and trim courses down to, um, to the bare, bare essentials, to think very carefully about exactly what outcomes we, we, we're trying to meet uh, and to, you know, and to work with the most essential content. Now, I know that um, is very difficult in, in, in some of the, the, the science fields because of, you know, that, that there are very essential building blocks that you can't miss out, can't miss out on. But yeah, uh, I think we have to make peace Piece with the fact that um, you know learning is a bit slower even with this group you know I said that um, we normally do a module in a week-long face-to-face block um, this group elected to do it in one week however we had to for example shift the five-minute presentation to tomorrow which is a week later than we would have normally done it in order to give people a chance to just catch up um, you know, so that is a, is a fact.
right. Just one more comment from Martin, and then I think we should move on. Um, so yeah. Martin says that his students um, uh, signal that they hate restarting the PowerPoint slides to get things that they misheard. And they've requested PowerPoint slides or speakers notes beneath um, instead. And then I don't know if he, he, if it's also from him, but he says students like to hear the material because it's warm and human, especially under lockdown. So yeah, I, they, they seem to be a little bit contradictory points, but I think it's really important that we listen to our students and um, yeah, try as far as possible to do what, what the majority find easier. Um, yeah. All right, so I think... All right, I'm going to go very quickly through, uh, through the notes that I have on this Word document. Um, so the first point has to do with orientating students. Um, now, we know that there was an online orientation on Are You Connected? Um, you know, and that had to do with getting students used to doing stuff with their devices. However, it's really important that, that every lecturer, uh, you know, uh, orientate students very carefully to working online with their course. Um, and um, it's, 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 it's also about, you know, how, how they need to go about working. So even though we work, work with adult learners, a uh, very, uh, very independent group of people, they also said, you know, uh, we needed to have talked through how to balance work and study effectively during the during the module, uh, and they had to think through the fact that they had to set aside, um, you know, specific time um, to to do the course, um, and that uh, structure and routine was important, and that this had to be explicitly mentioned and talked about. So orientation to online learning is is very important. Um, Martin also about narrated slides. Um, our participants uh, all said that they that that was the best part of of, um, of the, the, the course. They really loved the narrated PowerPoints. Um, and that was because they, you know, they could go back, um, stop, you know, look up a word that they didn't understand. Um, you know, it gave them flexibility, they could listen to the slideshow over and over again, they could listen to it while they were going uh, you know, taking their dog for a walk, um, etc. Et it was also a way of um, either, you know, they had to decide, do I, do I do the reading first and then watch the PowerPoint slide? Um, or do I watch the slide and get, get um, a kind of framing for the reading and then do the reading? Uh, you know, so they had to make decisions about that, but the PowerPoint slides and the readings complemented each other um, really well. Um, we, you know, had to learn how to make narrated PowerPoint slides. Um, um, and one of the things that we really had to think about very carefully was that we didn't have the people in the room. Um, and so we had to be a lot more organized about, you know, how we structured the slides. And we had to, um, you know, think through very carefully uh, how to mediate the ideas um, on the slides. And, and um, you know, you were talking about the, the human aspect um, that people miss when, they, when they're online. And, and so this is really important, you know, that it's their teacher talking. Um, and you've, you've got to infuse um, the, the presentation with, with your energy. And, um, and, and, and that's, that, that was a, a really important, um, important thing we learned. We grappled with the, with the technology, but, you know, and, and also we learned that to do online teaching or to prepare for online teaching takes a lot longer than to prepare for face-to-face -face teaching. At least that was our experience. Uh, in terms of the group work, um, again, this is a response to Martin. Uh, you know, if students resist doing group work, I, th I think, you know, that this is a time where you have got to insist um, that this is what, what's going to happen. Um, and, and the reason is just that, um, you know, students need, um, you know, that they need the, the sociality, you know, the, um, one of our participants, and actually not one, you know, quite a few of them said that they missed the social space. 
uh, and having to do group tasks also is, is, is a way of fostering uh, accountability. It's a way of having a support group, um, you know, that you can bounce ideas, um, you know, uh, you can bounce ideas back and forth uh, among members of the group. You can check your understanding. Um, so, you know, and, and particularly if it's a, you know, the, the group contains people with different strengths. And, and so that's, that's really important. I see the chats going, going, going. Shall I stop? Um, just an agreement, I think, generally that the, the, you know, the group work is a, is a good idea and um, social pressure sometimes helps. I mean, at least one participant said that he, he quite felt the, the need to be accountable to his group. Um, Kelly wants to know how how the groups were used, reading groups or tasks or both, and did they have space on Are You Connected or WhatsApp? Do you want to answer that, Joanne? Yeah. Uh, so Kelly, this time around, it was mainly tasks, not reading groups. Um, you know, in other modules we do reading groups. Um, they basically had to do tasks in groups and you know write their responses as as groups. Uh, we did give them an option to do the tasks in individually or in pairs, but um, groups was what we preferred. Um, and what they, so this is how some people used their groups. They, uh, they met twice a day, checked in with each other in the morning and went through what was required of them during the day. They looked at the RU Connected site, made sure they understand what they had to do for the day um, and then planned. Uh, how they were going to work. And then they checked in again at the end of the day, uh, you know, to make sure that they, they understood things um, in, in, the, in the right way. And then that was also a time to share their, um, you know, their responses to, to tasks. Um, you know, so it was a really important social support and accountability space. Um, okay. Shall I go on? Yeah. So, as I said, you know, people said they missed the, the social space of face-to-face of -face work um, and that the Zoom meetings and the group work made up for this gap uh, to some extent. And also, of course, the, you know, the WhatsApp communication um, between subgroups and, and the bigger group. Um, it was, it was tough, it wasn't easy. One person talked about, you know, that the, the week was like a roller coaster, um, but engaging, it was tough um, because he had to also prepare his own courses for his own students. And then what we found really interesting was that um, people said, you know, they suggested that when we do meet face to face, that we do more blended learning stuff. Now we've always thought that we do that that's what we do and that you know and we do it kind of reasonably well but um what they really want going forward is more tasks in groups um, and i think the experience of doing the um the google docs you know responding to tasks on the google docs as groups they found that really really useful uh, you know, so we're going to have to think about, you know, how we can do more of the blended stuff when we get together with them. I'm not going through um, their comments on the, the module as such, because that's not relevant for you. Uh, just a few comments on the course design and the, the pedagogy. Um, so our students thought that, you know, even though there were issues with the way that we set up the, the RU Connected site, for example, um, that they thought that um, our online or remote pedagogy uh, was really well conceptualized. And they thought that the module was packaged really well, you know, that the tasks were, were really clear, that, you know, there was a, a, a specific um, uh, kind of way in which the, the, the site was set up and each block was set up. Um, I've already said that long sections needed to be chunked into shorter sections. Um, and then something which will, I think, be useful for people here listening. Somebody suggested introducing each subsection with a brief voice note 
to situate that section. Um, now we, you know, we try, we try to do that in a little um, sort of label where we, we, we write at the top what the section is going to be about. Um, and often when we started a PowerPoint, we spoke about how that linked to something else, but, but the students wanted a little bit more, you know, so in the next module, which we start next week, uh, we're going to do brief voice notes to introduce each, each section as a kind of bridge um, and to, to frame the, the section. Um, yeah, the feedback on the tasks they thought was good. Quick feedback uh, on the tasks. Uh, that's really important. It helps them feel connected. It helps to, to let them know that they're doing okay. Um, I've already said that more orientation was necessary. Uh, in particular related to how to use the Google Docs, um, that, that it's, it's really important to be consistent uh, in how we um, frame instructions, consistency in how instructions is given for each session, consistency in how we name things. So if a PowerPoint has a particular name, title, uh, you know, to duplicate that title, um, in, you know, when we introduce the PowerPoint on the Are You Connected site. Um, I mean, that's sort of self-evident, but, you know, somehow that's the sort of thing that, that slips and, and students find that really important. Um, yeah, we spoke about a separate Google Doc for each task. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And then just um, one person on the group said that, her experience of online learning is now going to enable her to, you know, kind of give much more useful and authentic um, suggestions to the lecturers she works with about um, doing online teaching. All right. Um, so, earlier on, Anthea asked a question about, um, you know, how we got the feedback. So this is one of the things we slipped up on in a way was that we didn't um, do a formal evaluation of the module, but we did in the final Zoom session, we did a, a round and every single person was asked to, to give feedback. Um, of course, so that's publicly and, and maybe there are things um, that they would say privately. And so, yeah, I think we probably do need to follow up with another opportunity if they wish to give us more feedback. I think we should just open the mic now. Mm -hmm. I'd be quite interested if, if Rieta said a bit more because she, she survived the course. <laughs> yes, I, I can definitely say I survived. Um, but um, I think everything that you said is exactly how I experienced it. And um, I'm trying to think now, um, from the side of an academic developer, if uh, we have now a specific uh, question that one of a few lecturers want to know, um, like I've previously asked about the setting the climate, you know, how to engage with a, a group that you're actually scared, you're scared to engage with them and you don't know them really well. But um, I think we didn't have that problem. Um, I can just say I was also one that was not very positive about group work, but I was so lonely and I needed somebody to talk to that it, that actually made, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it opened the way to uh, when, uh, since we had to work in groups, the first time that we met in groups, we actually found, oh, but it's actually nice. It's like in the old days that we sit around the table and, and discuss. I think it was just that when just a little bit not feeling comfortable but um, then after that we actually met twice a day and it was really helpful thanks for that Rita. anybody else want to it's, it's uh, pretty much time up but if anybody wants to say anything has your last chance learn perhaps i can just say while people are thinking if that um, that I think it's probably important to stick with what you know as you, you're preparing for online learning. For example, um, 
we were introduced to a, um, a tool called Lesson Plan, uh, which looked really interesting and useful. Um, but because we had already gone into lockdown, um, you know, as we were introduced to, to this tool, you know, it was really just way too complicated for us to get our heads around. Um, and so we decided to stick with uh, you know, the regular Are You Connected as we know it. Um, and I think that um, you know, just chunking sections in Are You Connected um, you know, without sort of superimposing lesson plan uh, works just as well, um, you know, and, and it saved us a lot of anxiety not to do it. Um, Martin, do you want to say something, um, elaborate on your comment in the chat about giving lessons in self-studying? Hi, Lynn. Hello, Joe. Sorry. Um, Hi. I'm still learning to fiddle with the buttons on this one. Um, something boiled up today with our second year class, which isn't very big, which is that they're all feeling very isolated, very disorientated. All their learning strategies that they had in face-to-face -face are not really working where they are. Um, intuitively, I know that some of them are living in very disturbed environments and they are not developed a routine where they get up and they attend during the lecture period and things like that. And I've been trying to encourage them in an indirect and um, probably not a very structured way and they haven't been picking up the hints. So one of my colleagues chimed in today and just gave them a straightforward lesson about a thing called the Pomodoro method and we'll see what comes of it. But essentially, um, I think most of them probably attended the online orientation things, but a, a number of them who did give me feedback said, oh, it was just a five minute video. Um, and I don't know whether that means they didn't engage properly with it. But I think that uh, a lot of us are new to this situation. We've kind of waded in, assuming that people quickly work out how to learn online. And um, yeah. We're not really putting ourselves in their place. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Martin. Um, I wonder, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Zella Lim. Um, do you want to put your question to the group quickly? You need to unmute yourself. Uh, okay, hi. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, yeah, you you called me right. Uh, oh, good. So uh, no, uh, I, it just uh, came to my mind now when uh, you uh, talked about Google uh, uh, Docs. Uh, so like uh, it was also the first time that you know I I moved uh, online. Uh, so what I did was I created a discussion forum uh, where students could. Uh, post their questions and also interact each other, respond to the students uh, where uh, I wanted to moderate uh, as well. But uh, nothing happened. Anyway, I, I posted uh, yesterday actually. Uh, so, but then like, I'm just thinking uh, if it's going to help if, for example, I create a Google Doc uh, where uh, students will post their questions uh, in any order and then I will summarize uh, the questions and uh, respond to the questions and probably send them as uh, uh, a Q and a kind of document. I don't know. I'm just asking if it works because I have a big uh, class uh, with more than 180 students, over 180 students. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think Nicola made some suggestions for, for alternate ways in, in which you can encourage that conversation as well. Okay, all right, okay, sure, I'll look at it. In the chat, yeah. Um, I'm wondering, Masejo has been very quiet and she was part of the group last week. I wonder if she wants to say something. Masejo, you don't have to. Masejo is going to be part of next week's group. Oh, she's part of next week's group. Yes, this is also what happens is you get confused. Sorry about that. Um, Joanne, do you want to just wrap up? I think our time, it's after three. And yes, yeah, I know. Time, 
time is definitely up. Um, yeah, you know, this was just us sharing our experience and I hope you, you found some of it useful um, for your own online teaching. Um, if you've got any questions um, after the session, then you please feel free to email us. We'll be very happy to talk to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Lynn and Joanne. I'm sorry there's a lawnmower going on outside. <laughs> um, but yeah, just thanks so much for sharing your you know, students' feedback and your thinking and experiences with us. I'm sure there's lots that everyone uh, can learn. So thanks for sharing, sharing your learning and reflections. Uh, I just want to mention that tomorrow we're having a session on um, uh, we're focusing throwing the ball back at you and saying you know here we'd like you to share feedback with us about how it's going um, I, we know a lot of people are doing some evaluations in their courses formative evaluations of, after the first week of online teaching um, others you know you might have had some feedback from students so I think we're just looking to have that conversation around how are things going um, what might we do differently? So even as Zilalem, you know, your strategy, I think that's something that, that other lecturers would also find useful. Um, yeah, so come along tomorrow. Please, you know, be open to sharing, even folks who are watching the recording, perhaps. Okay, cool. And I put a whole bunch of links, and I might need to post them in other spaces, but we're creating a lot of our resources as open educational resources, which means that people at other institutions can then adapt them uh, for their own purposes. Yeah, so just, uh, just mentioning that. And thanks everyone for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much, Nicola and Neil, for creating these spaces. Um, it's good for us to reflect on our practices. So, Thanks, yeah, good luck to everyone. Uh, Lynn, Nicola, Neil, don't forget to stay behind. Are we in trouble? <laughs> Are we in trouble? <laughs> <laughs>